y'all, it's Betsy. And today we have a highly requested video that I'm finally figuring out how I wanted to film. At first I was gonna do a live and then I wasn't. And this is, we're going to go over my 2020 big eyeshadow palette collection. Now, as y'all know, I have a ton. There's over 230 palettes here. Now, before we get into this, I know this is a lot. This is more than any one person needs. But part of what I do is review it on YouTube. Plus, I am an avid eyeshadow collector. It's my money, I can spend it how I want to. This is a judgment-free zone, so if you wanna judge, might as well click out of here now. So with that being said, let's get into it. So I keep all of my eyeshadow palettes in alphabetical brand order. So we're gonna go over what's up top first because I have a couple that are up here and then we'll go in by brand. So I have the Glam Light paint palette. This is the original one that has all the basic colors because I really like the artist look of it so I wanted to keep it up there. And then this is the Dior Couture Collection Holiday. It's not just eyeshadows, but my husband got this for me for our anniversary. I love the packaging on it, so I wanted to display it. Okay, now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. And we'll swatch a few things, but not much. So first off, these are the three palettes I own by Ace Beauté. So we have the Nostalgia palette. This is the newest, and I am in love with these colors. These are so bright and beautiful. This pink is just to die for. So we've got that one. Then we've got the flare palette, which to me screams fall like nobody's business. I love this palette. And then this is the oceanic palette, which is a beautiful blue green. Okie dokie. Next up is the Adept Plain Jane palette. Now these are duo and multi-chrome shadows and let me tell you, this is a gorgeous, just soft, buttery. I mean, you can see they're like that wet formula. So when I put my finger into this, you can see a fingerprint, but look at those shadows. This formula is so darn unique. Look at that just the easiest swatching and they're supposed to be coming out with another palette and it's going to have some mattes in it and i will tell you boys and girls i am super excited about being able to play with that because their formula is amazing next up we have my abh palettes so these are the original style abh palettes and i own seven of these and this might be a mini declutter, I'm not sure. So we have the Alyssa Edwards palette, which looks like this. Alyssa Edwards is one of my favorite drag queens. She also does has her own dance company in Texas. Now it's not even anywhere close to me, but my goodness, I would die if I met like Alyssa Edwards, just so you know. Then we have the Prism palette, which as you can see has been dug into quite a bit. This shade Pyramid, I think this was holiday 2017. Look how pretty that is. And the shade Sphere. I preferred this palette over the Subculture. I gave the Subculture one to Nadia. Then we have the Carly Bible palette, which I really like this color the scheme too. Look how pretty those are. Anastasia, even though they got to the point where they were releasing so much stuff, it was crazy. Their palettes are still good. This isn't an oldie but a goodie. This is the Modern Renaissance. Then we have the Soft Glam. Then we have the Jackie Ina, which is my favorite out of this size palette. And then last but not least is the Riviera, which is definitely not a favorite. If I were going to get rid of any of these, it would be the Riviera, just so you know. Then we have the big four Norvina palettes. So this is the Norvina volume one. The way these, the mattes in here, I really love the mattes and the shimmers are really gorgeous too. Y'all know I'm a makeup magpie. I think that's what Steven says, where I'm easily distracted by shiny things. But this is a beautiful purpley orange kind of color story. So it's something a little bit different. Then we've got this one, which I think is volume two. 
Yes, this one's volume two. So this one's more of your blue green color story. And then we've got volume three, which is my favorite out of these because it has more of that fall kind of grungy orange brown look, which I really enjoy. And then last but not least is volume four, which is this is one was released this year. And this is definitely a pink neutral dream. Like I really enjoy again, these mattes, but the shimmers, We'll show you both. Look at that. It just doesn't get any better than that. Next up, we've got a couple of palettes by Alien Cosmetics. So this is the Alien Cosmetics. This was the Christmas one. Again, the shimmer formula in here is that beautiful wet formula and it is just gorgeous. And I will tell you from the two that I have, look at that. It makes me excited to try more from the brand, but this one's my favorite from them. This is the Alien Cosmetics times Serendipity the Artist. It has some beautiful, beautiful, look at this multi-chrome. Let's see if we can make it show up on camera. It's like a green, pink, just stunning. Then we have a couple by Artist Couture. This is the Supreme Nudes. I kept hearing everybody on YouTube talk about this. I have used this once and it seems to be working beautifully. I need to play with it more to be able to give you like a full on review of it. I wore this one the other day though. This is more up my alley. That shade right there called Peridot. This is the Club Daddy palette, which is in collaboration with Artist Couture, which is Mac Daddy, and Static John. So that is that shade. Now we're getting into a newer brand to me this year, and that is Be Perfect. And these two palettes that I have are in collaboration with Stacy Marie, makeup artist. This is the Carnival 3 I Love Tahiti. You've seen me use this a few times on my channel. The mattes are phenomenal. The shimmers are just like butter. Look at that. That is like a good true red. That is almost impossible to find. Now they are massive palettes, but man. And then this is the second one in the line and this is the Carnival XL Pro. So this one has a couple of highlights in it, which I never reach for because if it's in an eyeshadow palette, I'll only use it if I'm using that eyeshadow palette, but look how beautiful those are. Isn't that pretty? Okie dokie. Now we're getting into my BH Cosmetics. <laughs> so there's quite a few of these and some oldies and some goodies. So I have the original Zodiac palette. I don't know why I kept the sleeves on these. I don't keep the sleeves on anything else. I need to throw that away. So that's what this looks like. This baked shimmer formula in here, look at that, is gorgeous. And the mattes are phenomenal. So I love this one. And then we also have the Love Signs which looks like this. So it's a little bit brighter. But see, the formulas are just perform. I mean, that's why I like it. But we're not gonna swatch everything because again, we would be here for 20,000 hours if we did. Then we have the Naughty Palette, which looks like this, I should show you. So that is the Christmas release. Then we have the Sweet Shop palette. So first off, we have Sugar Cone, beautiful neutral palette. These Sweet Shops are one of my favorite sets from BH. That is the Pistachio, the shade Crunch. Look at that. Doesn't get any better. Then this is the Orange Sorbet, which looks like this. Isn't that gorgeous? Then we have the cherry on top. This is the bubble gum. If you hear me throwing things, I'm throwing these away. I don't need all these sleeves. I am not a person to keep packaging. 
And then last but not least is the cotton candy, which looks like this. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now we're getting into the Halloween palettes from BH. I have two of those. So I have the Drop Dead Gorgeous Collection, Little Bit Psycho, and the Full On Crazy. Now, if I would have known that there were so many repeat shades in the Little Bit Psycho with the Full On Crazy, I probably wouldn't have bought both, but I did. Oh, then here's one more BH Cosmetics palette. And this one I haven't used yet, but again, I saw so many people who were raving about this one on YouTube that I had to try it. So again, Cravings, their shimmers are gorgeous. I love something that catches the light. This is the Bombay Cosmetics Witches Brew Palette, and I did a review over this. This is an indie brand, but again, it's that wet shimmer that gets me. If you got pretty shimmers, I'm coming for you. I will buy the palette, I will try the palette, I will probably love the palette. Maybe not, but you know. You got good shimmers, you will catch my eye. Next up, this is my first palette that I got from Black Moon Cosmetics. This is the Urban Myth palette. I love the artwork on the outside and the color story on the inside is so gorgeous. Now these aren't that wet formula, but they still have that ultra metallic and the mattes in here, they swatch terribly, but if you watch that video, they perform beautifully. And if you look, the mirror is the alien spaceship. Okie dokie. Next up, this is BK Beauty. This is the True Beauty palette. This is the first palette from the brand. And I loved their brushes so much that I was like, well, we'll give this neutral Nelly palette a try. And I've actually used this one several times, but my favorite shade in here is the shade Kate. Look at that. And there's something about this palette that on older eyes, it just works because the shimmers aren't too shimmery. Because girls, you know what I mean, that whenever you start getting eye wrinkles and stuff like that, that it isn't always the most flattering. This is the Beauty Bay Book of Magic palette, which looks like this. I really enjoyed this palette. And again, that shimmer right there, that one is crystal. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, next up, this is Charlotte Tilbury. The mattes in here are fine, the shimmers are fine. It's just fine. It is not worth $75 though. No siree Bob. Not in the least little bit, not in my opinion. This is the Ciate London, the editor palette. This is pretty much mainly all shimmers. It came in a boxy charm. I've never actually used it. I think that's going to be a get rid of because I don't think I'll ever use it. Now we're getting into ColourPop. This is gonna take forever. This is the designer, the collection Midnight Masquerade, which y'all know there will not be any getting rid of any of my Disney palettes. This is the Misunderstood. This is the villains version. This is the regular designer one. Now we're gonna get into the monochromes. Uh-huh, honey. I love the name of that one. Aura and Out, Meant to Be, I haven't used that one yet. Pastels typically aren't my thing, but I hold on to all of these because I collect them. This is Just My Luck, Blue Moon, that shade, Tide Pool, beautiful. In the Clouds, I haven't used this one yet. This is their new, one of their newer ones. That D light color looks gorgeous. In a trance. It's my pleasure. Lilac you a lot. It's gonna take forever just to get through these. Cloud spun, this is the new pastel pink one. And I was scared it was gonna be too close to like strawberry shake, but strawberry shake is more ready, like pastel red almost, which would be pink, yeah. Then we have the ooh la la, which is pink. 
Then this is the main squeeze, so this is the red one. Okay, wine and only. This is the newest one. I couldn't resist that. Orangey Glad. Baby Got Peach. None of these nine pans are going anywhere, just in case you're wondering. Miss Bliss. Going Coconuts. Smoke Show, which I think they changed the name of this to Blow in Smoke. Then this is the ColourPop Hello Kitty. Nadia was not a fan of that, but we're still not getting rid of it. The Child Palette. Love this one. That one was amazing. The Anna Palette from Frozen 2. The Elsa palette from Frozen 2. Then we've got a few more. This is the Biddy palette. So this was in collaboration with Pony. We've got the Love Bird. See if I can hold it where you can see it. This is the Bird of Paradise. This one's the Night Owl. And this is the sunflower one. So this is Little Ray of Sunshine. So as you can see, I collect these little nine pans, but I am kind of at the point where I'm over color pop. I will probably still, honestly, if you want to know, buy the nine pans because, you know, there's that aspect to me that collects them. But and if there's Disney, I will buy it. But other than that, I'm kind of over ColourPop. So let's put those back where they belong. Okay, next up, this is the Milan palette. So again, that's a Disney one. That's not going anywhere. Candyland is going somewhere because I can't use this. It doesn't work. It's gone. This is the Garden Variety. I like this one, so we will hold on to it. This is the Gather Round G Sisters. This is the Hocus Pocus collab. So I'm going to hold on to that one. Then we've got, let's move my wipes out of the way. The Sandstone palette. I haven't even used this, but I wanna hold on to it. Now we're getting into some of my 12 pans. So first up, we have At Forest Sight. This is the collaboration with Raw Beauty Clerk Christie. The Sweet Talk palette. I have pan and an eyeshadow. Now I get it that it's pressed glitter, but it still counts. That is one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. The Wild Nothing. I'm going to declutter because it was nothing on my face. This is the All That palette. You can tell I love the wine and berry tones. Good as gold. Again, that one's staying. This is the Give Me Butterflies. I love that color stink game on that one. I have all the butterfly ones, just so you know. This is the Flutterby. Love that mauve tone. Butter Me Up. Love that one. Gotta keep them in order. A flutter. And this one is Bye Bye Birdie. See, so, so the owls and the butterflies were released last year. The owls were released at, or the birds were released at Ulta. The butterflies were released, I think, at ColourPop. Or I could be having them backwards. And then this was their summer collection a few years ago, which is the Press Glitters and Neon pigments and I actually do like their neons so we will definitely be holding on to that. I think I have like 63 or so different brands on the shelf. Then this is a new one. This is the Fade Into Hue palette. So it's a colorful palette. That's dirty. Here is a big disappointment from this year. This is the Juicy Boost by Colored Rain. It looks like this. I do enjoy the shimmers. I'm not a big fan of the mattes, but I won't get rid of it because I'm gonna hold on to it for testing with others. This is the Dose of Colors times Mini Disney, and this is the Minnie Mouse palette, so that's staying. 
this is the e.l.f. Electro Paradise palette, which looks like it. I think I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't ever reach for it. We have the Game Beauty Adventure palette. I love this, and this shade Stealth is so pretty. So pretty. So that is staying. Now we're gonna get into our Give Me Glow. So we have the Grunge palette, which you know I love a good grungy eye look, which looks like this. Give Me Glow, I really like their shimmers. Their mattes are a little dry, but I still enjoy it. This is the Vintage Rose. This is the Christmas Morning. This one is probably one of my favorites out of it. This is the Sweet and Sticky. I still haven't used that one yet. That's part of my Black Friday order. And then the Vivid Rose, which is probably my second favorite color story. And now we're getting into a glam light. So we have the Ice Cream Dream Palette. This is an excellent, excellent palette. I love Glam Light's formula. They have a great formula. This is the Chocolate Donut. And I keep the boxes for these because these weird shaped palettes. Yeah, so this is what that one looks like. I have a video on it. So that is Glam Light's Neutral Palette. Then this is the Cake Palette which looks like this. I haven't used it yet, but that's again, part of my Black Friday order, so. And then this is the Glam Light Pie Palette. This was part of their Christmas foodie box, which looks like this, and I have used this. And again, it's wonderful quality, but I keep the boxes for these, even though I hate keeping boxes, because they're an odd shaped palette. If I didn't love the formula, I wouldn't keep them, or I wouldn't buy them, because I hate, hate, hate with a passion, weird shaped palettes. This is the Glam Light Paint Palette Pro. This is the new one this year. So as you can see from last year, it's a ton smaller, but man, oh man, look at that. Can you see, look at that. I mean, now you kind of understand why these will stay in my life. I mean, I just can't, I cannot. Okay, now we're getting into Huda. I told you this was going to be a long video. So we've got the newest one, which is the Naughty, which looks like that. That's the weird coronavirus shade. Then we've got Mercury and Retrograde. This was the Christmas palette last year. Love this color story. Huda does nudes amazingly. This is the new nudes. This is one of my favorites by Huda. Then we have the Desert Dusk, beautiful orange purple color story, and the Rose Gold Remastered palette. I had the original, and then I upgraded to this and got rid of that one. So beautiful, warm tone, you know, what you see with every brand. So this is the Nubian 2 by Juvia's Place. I really love Juvia's Place. This color, look at Cleopatra. Look at that navy. I love a good navy blue. Then we have the Wahala 2, the shade Fake. Look at that. I mean, it just takes no effort. I mean, they're just, like, if I could explain to you how soft. Look at that. And it's multi-chrome. Then we've got the Wahala 1, this shade right here, Power. Look at that. Do you see why I'm obsessed with freaking Juvia's Place? Then this is the Masquerade. This is the mini Masquerade. They had a bigger version, it had bigger pans. Then the Zulu. As you can tell, I'm attracted to bright colors and grungy colors. This is the Saharan. The Douce, or Douce. The Festival. And my favorite Juvia's Plays palette is the Nomad. Look at that, I mean, grungy goodness. Grungy, grungy goodness. Now we're into KVD Vegan Beauty. This is the Edge of Reality palette. 
I like the shimmer, so I'll hold on to it for that because they have that wet formula, but there's not enough mattes and the packaging on this is the cheapest freaking packaging for that price. Drives me insane. This is back whenever Kat Von D was still owner. This is the Satan Center palette. This is released from 2017 and I love the Satan Center palette. Look at that. And the formula is still good. I mean, after over three years. Then we have the metal mat, the mini one. I missed out on the big one, so I bought the mini one and probably will never get rid of it because I have fear of missing out on those. And then this one, again, I won't ever get rid of. It's the 10th anniversary. My husband bought this for me before all of the anti-vax rigmarole. And I love this palette. This was like my first attempt at like an army green. And I found out then that that color is like super flattering on me. And ever since then, it has been a love, a love. Cause that was when I really wasn't into color too much. This is the Kaleidos Escape Pod palette. Again, their shimmers. Look at that. I mean, there's just nothing better than a good shimmer. Okay, now we're moving down to section two. So literally we have like a lot of feet of palettes. So this is the coffee palette, the I Love Coffee palette by Clarity Cosmetics. I have a video using this. It's purdy. Then this is, I bought that on Black Friday. This is the Clarity Cosmetics private party. This isn't my favorite because I wish there were more mattes and I wish there weren't two pressed glitters, but I like Clarity Cosmetics. They are a black owned brand and they're actually local to me. The Berry Royal palette. I love this palette. Love this palette. This was one of my top 10 indie palettes of the year. This is the Kylie Cosmetics, whatever wild collection. It's not bad, not the best, not the worst. Then I have three lethal palettes. Now I hold on to the outsides of these. This is the After Dark. So this is more of their pastel palette. Such good quality and formula. Then this is the Lethal Cosmetics times Jolina. This was their actual first real palette. And Jolina is a German influencer. Then we've got the At Night, which I love this color story. I like this one the best. This is my favorite one from Lethal. But that's because I like a good grungy color story. Okay, next up we've got our Lime Crime. This is the Venus XL2. I honestly keep it mainly for this shade right here, Obscura. It is such a unique shade. It almost looks like it glows in the dark. Maybe I should hold it so you can see it. Such like a peachy green color story. Then we have the XL2. Again, warm neutral palette. Then this is the Prelude palette. I love this color story. So unique. I haven't used it yet though. This is the Lit Cosmetics Night Moves palette. This is a pressed glitter palette, but I love the pressed glitters in here, man. They are gorgeous. Lit has some of my favorite loose glitters too. This one is not the best palette. This is the Lorac Beauty and the Beast palette. I think this came out in 2016. So again, not getting rid of it, not my favorite, but the packaging is 10 out of 10 cute. Another one I keep this book for is the Moon Spell because it's the outside packaging is so intricate and that's what it looks like. Love, love, love Lunar Beauty's quality. It is absolutely amazing. And then I have, this is the Eternal Eclipse and that shade right there, that silver, what is that? Adamantium, look how beautiful that is. But isn't that a gorgeous color story? So I have two by Lunar Beauty, then oh, made by Mitchell. This is what I'm wearing today on my eyes is the Feet on the Ground palette. This is definitely up my alley. It's those beautiful grungy tones. And I bought these when they were 40% off. Okay, so this is Head in the Clouds. This is what it looks like. 
I really enjoy this formula so far, but I bought these for 40% off on Black Friday because their regular price with shipping to the United States was ridiculous. And then he had a little nine pant. I haven't used this one yet, but it's pretty too. Okay, now we're getting into my milk babies. And I own every single melt palette. Now I don't own all their stacks because when they had stacks, I just thought they were ridiculous. But I am waiting on my blueprint one. This is the Gemini palette. This is my favorite, absolute favorite. I've had this one for years whenever it came out. I love this. This was my first melt palette and that's what made me fall in love with the brand. So then we have the Muerte. Look at that color story. This was holiday last year. And the Vita, again, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then we have the Rust Stack or Rust Palette. They're turning all of their stacks into palettes, so I'm buying them as they come. So this is the Rust Palette. The She's in Parties. Love this. This is one of my favorites from Melt too. That one's great. The 420 Palette which a lot of people had issues with, but I didn't mind it. Look at this. I love these. I love these grungy tones. That's why I love it. Millennial Pinks, my least, don't drop my palettes, is my least favorite melt palette. It looks like this. The shimmers kind of suck, but you know, again, I won't get rid of it because it's part of my melt collection. This is the 27 palette. This was the first palette they released, but I didn't, wasn't interested in it, but it is beautiful. I bought it after I started falling in love with all their palettes and I was like, I have to have them all. I'm a collector. This is Smoke Sessions. This shade right here, Blue Dream, that mint, cannot get over. Then we have the Radioactive. The Impulsive, which a lot of people didn't like, but again, I did. But it's a beefy, heavy freaking palette. Then we have The Waiting Room. And last but not least is The Recently Deceased, which this is my favorite from the Beetlejuice set. So gorgeous. Okay, then we have our Midas Cosmetics. So we have the Smoky Glow palette, which is a warm pinky neutral. And then I also have the Flower Bomb, which I really love. I love glitters. I know a lot of people don't like pressed glitters, but man, oh man, do I. So then I have the Milani Gilded Rouge. I haven't used this yet, so we're still holding on to it. This is the Nabla Side by Side palette. This was in the Trend Mood box. I really enjoy this palette. Okay, this is the Nabla Secret palette, which looks like this. I like this one too. Now we're getting into my Natasha Denona's. This is my first big Natasha Denona, the Star palette. As you can see, this baby's well loved. Um, it's old too. I think this came out in 2016. Yeah, it's probably way past its expiration date, but it ain't going anywhere, just so you know. Then this is the gold. I purchased this this year with my birthday money because so many people kept talking about how good it was and I skipped over it because it was so neutral, but I'm glad I own it. And this is the Sunset Palette. Love this color story. Then we have the Lila. Pinky Purple, one of my favorites, but my absolute favorite Natasha Denona is the Metropolis. Love this, but again, you can see because the greens. This is the holiday for 2020. This is the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome, which looks like this. So everything is matte except for those three, which are multi-chrome, which they're good. They're not my favorite multi-chrome, but they're not the worst. Then we're getting into their $65 range, and I think all of these were released this year, maybe. One of them may have been released last year. So this is the Sunrise. Did I hold that up long enough? Mm -hmm. Then we have the Glam, which is a cool tone. 
bronze, love that one. And the love, this was released at Valentine's last year. So I love this one. I've used that one a few times. Okie dokie. Next up, these are my two Nomad palettes. So we have the Orient Express and the Cartagena Magica. And I'm going to buy the Iceland palette when it comes out tomorrow. This is the Notoriously Morbid Haunted AF palette. Again, look at this. Look at that. These shimmers work for me best over glitter glue, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Can't, no. Cannot, you cannot. And then this is the Dapper Darklings. Look at that. This color right here, I feel like is so unique to my collection. It's like a minty jade. So beautiful. Which for me to be like, hey, there's something unique that's almost impossible. We got a scoochie scoochie. This is the Pia Louise Worldy palette. These freaking palettes weigh like 20,000 pounds, but, and the brand has issues, come to find out, I didn't know. But yeah, that is it. I like this color story. And then we have the Love Tapes, which was I think Valentine's last year. The packaging, again, is obsessive. But the inside, is pretty it's a good valentine's palette i almost want to depot them but if i depot them i'm scared i will never use them okay now we're getting into another one of my favorite brands and this is pat mcgrath so this one i don't know if i have that has the labels on the back so this is i think the third one Then we have, because I own all the motherships. This is the first one. I think this is the second one. I have no idea. I should have kept the sleeves for these, but I didn't. This is the fourth one. This is the Decadence. This is the one that they released also in Star Wars packaging. You see that the little clear plastic thingies got stuck from one to the other. This is the Bronze Seduction. This is one of my favorites. This is the Midnight Sun. This is Divine Rose One. Love this shade. Pat McGrath, her special shades. I love them, love them. But, this is Divine Rose too. VR Sex ter Terrestrial, that shade, look at that. Okay, then this is the, what is this one called? The Rose Decadence. This was not my favorite. I'll, I'll be honest, that was definitely not my favorite. And then we have the Celestial, whatever. The Celestial Divinity, Jesus criminy. But look at that. This is holiday this year, absolutely amazing. Okay, so now we're into pure. This is the festival palette, came in a boxy charm. That one's going to go bye bye. My back is hurting, y'all. So, this is the Barbie palette. I own this strictly for packaging. Look at that. Inside's gorgeous, but the packaging is everything. Then we have the Pure and Raw Beauty Christy collab. So there's the colorful side on that one. The neutrals on that one. Super nice. This is the Rebel Rouge Labs Howling For You. They have another one I've pre-ordered because I enjoyed this so much, the screen. The mats in here are really, really good. So I really like that. So. Now we're getting into Makeup Revolution, which I think there will be a few declutters. This is the Curses and Hexes. I use this, definitely don't like it. It's going. These are the two Nightmare Before Christmas ones. This is this Jack, never been used, but I bought it because I love Disney. And then this is the Sally, which is so disappointing for color scheme because her Sally's patchwork dress should have been better. Then these are the 
Revolution Pro. These are supposed to be dupes for the Pat McGrath. So this one is Earth and Stone. This is Night and Day. And as you can see, I've used these, and this is Smoke and Mirrors. These are pretty good. They're not my favorite, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna hold on to those because that's one of the few Makeup Revolution that I do like. This is the Leviticus palette by SS Chic. I did a review over this. Look at those greens. And then this color is stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's like a neon coral. Love that. Love it. Then this is Shared Planet. These are weighty, absolutely weighty. So we've got the Tiger, which is like a warm palette. And they donate money back to conservative ships, con charities, let's put it that way. And then this is the Polar Bear. These are both really good quality. I'm excited to see what else comes from the brand. Then we're gonna get into our shroud. So my favorite, it's freaking bats. Butte Bean and Shroud, love this one. The color story is so unique. My least favorite because I'm just not a pastel person, but I wanted to own all of them. This is the Cutie palette, or Creepy Cute. The Divinity, and this one still says Strobe and so does that one, but it's Shroud now. I like the color story and the Arcana, which I really love the color story. I love those grungy color stories. And this is in collaboration with Butte Bean. So amazing. Now we're gonna get into Sigma. So we have the Corderosa, which is the coral palette. I ordered these when they were like 40% off because I had bought the Untamed and loved it. This is the Enchanted and I haven't used the Corderosa or Enchanted yet. And then this is the Untamed. Again, that grungy color story. You can kind of see by what I show you what I'm obsessed with. This is Spoiled Lips. This is the uh, planchette palette. If you don't know what a planchette is, it is this thing, the little center thingy that you use whenever you're using a Ouija board or a spirit board. And this is the Slay for Selma collaboration. I haven't used this one yet, but they had a good sale on their website when I ordered the planchette, so I ordered another palette too. This is Storybook Cosmetics, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I got like all of their stuff in a mystery box my husband bought me and it was like $150, but it came with all their brushes, all their palettes, all their liquid lipsticks, like all kinds of stuff. Okay, so it was super cheap. This is the Mean Girls palette and I like their brushes. Eyeshadows, eh, not my favorite. And then this is the Wizardly and Witchcraft. Uh, this is probably my favorite color scheme out of them, but it's still not phenomenal. We're fixing to get to stuff that we'll actually probably get rid of some. This is the Sugar Pull 10th Anniversary. I just got this one, so I haven't used it yet. But this one might be a dupe for that color that I love in, yeah, I think that might be a dupe for the color that I love in the Lime Crime. Oh, it is. This is the Capsule Palette C3, the black edition. This was Halloween. Then we have the second one, which is the orange. And the first one, which is the pink. Sugar Pill has amazing, amazing matte formulas, let me tell you. So, just in case you're wondering. Jiminy Cricket, too many palettes. So these are the two I have by Sydney Grace. This is in collaboration with Mel Thompson. This is the Tiny Marvels. Looks like this. Scarab is beautiful. The shimmers in here are just, they're something. But the mattes are really good. And then this is the Enduring Love. This is a light one. But I love the names. So if you look at the names, it's all couples, Romeo, Juliet. And then the three centers are not names. And then it's Darcy and Elizabeth. Albert and Victoria. So, I love how that goes. Now, we're getting into Tarte palettes. So, we have this one. I love this packaging. And I keep this for these glitters because I really like these glitters. This is, I don't remember, High Tides and Good Vibes. Plus, it smells like vanilla. 
then this one is the Young Wild and Cruelty Free. My husband bought me this one. I haven't used it. It's going bye-bye. Don't need it. Okay, Tardis Pro. We'll hold on to that for color reference. The Remix palette. I bought this when it was on sale and I shouldn't have because I really, it's not my favorite color story. So that one's going. So whittled it down to two Tarte palettes. The El Barrio palette by Terra Moons is gorgeous. Again, I have a video using it. Love it, love it, love it. That one's staying. Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes. I think I'm gonna get rid of because it's not something that I reach for. Oh, no, no, let's hold on to it. I don't know. The Then and Now palette, I enjoyed. I don't know if I still do. I need to reuse some of these to see if they're actually holding up. This is the Chocolate Gold. Okay, so this one I think came out in 2017. So I've had this one a while smells like chocolate then this is the gingerbread spice so this one's 2018 palette and this was 2020 the pumpkin spice love this one i really like the color scheme on this one and then this is the clover the explorer palette i really like this palette and i still am not getting rid of it because i i do i don't know why well i do it's probably the packaging then we have the Life's a Festival palette. This one I feel like was ahead of its time because it had some really unique kind of duochrome and then Unicorn Tears is still a beautiful highlight. So that one's staying. The Pretty Rich, kind of offensive, but I like the pressed glitters in here. I wasn't going to buy it. I went to Sephora, I swatched it and I loved it. The Urban Decay Born to Run. Not my favorite, but we're gonna hold on to it for reference sake. This is the Game of Thrones. This one won't go away because it is collection based. This is the Urban Decay Moon Dust. I love this palette. Again, it's one like, you can see there are some dips and some shadows. Like this shade right here, look at that. That's a big dip because I love that shade. The Moon Dust formula is still really good. Stone Vibes, that's this year, so we're not getting rid of it. But I do like this palette. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst. This is the Wired one. I bought it on sale, plan to use it, haven't used it, so we're gonna hold on to it. Hopefully I will use it, maybe. The After Dark. I don't know why I'll hold on to it, but I am. We're getting there, y'all. We're in the ease, or ease, the use. I'm tired. Ultraviolet, terrible palette, not getting rid of. And the reason why I'm not getting rid of it is for reference. This is the Honey palette. This one is actually really, really good. And then I have the Naked Cherry. It hasn't been used. I bought it on sale at Ulta when I was drinking. Don't drink and shop. Accidents cause purchases. Then we have the Wicked Sisters in Your Dream. Whenever I saw this Freddy Krueger themed palette, Nightmare on Elm Street, I was like, hell yes, this is going to be mine. Has pressed glitter, so if you don't like pressed glitters, but the formula is really good. So I have that one. And the Wicked Sisters Invocation of the Spirit. This is the craft. This was the book that they used in the original version of the craft. Love this. And the shade Rosary, this pressed glitter right here is gorgeous. Gorgeous, love it, love it, love it, love it. Then we have the Best Life palette by Violet Voss, the only Violet Voss palette I own, and I hold on to it because again, these glitter colors, the glitter is uber fine, and it's just unique. Like, you need a glitter glue with it, as you can see, but it's not like, it's a super soft glitter. Like you can kind of see that it doesn't have the same grittiness as a lot of pressed glitters. These are two palettes by ZC Cosmetics times the British Museum, the Alice in Wonderland palettes. So the packaging on these is to die for. The formula is not my favorite, but my husband bought these and I really love the packaging. So these will stay. So that one's the 
Alice palette, and then this is the Queen of Hearts palette. So, last but not least, which I consider an eyeshadow palette, is my Cleonas. This doesn't get put in alphabetical order because these are my babies. This palette is the most expensive palette I own if you add up the cost of all of these. So, she's special. But yeah, that is my entire 2020 eyeshadow palette before anything that I have ordered in 2021 has come in. So, that's what we're left with. We decluttered two, four, eight palettes. So not the best, not the worst, but I love my collection and I know every piece inside and out in my collection. So I wasn't planning on getting rid of a lot, but I guess that's it. So we'll see y'all later. Bye.